Alrighty, top 10 creepy pasta stories part two. Let's dive into it. Number 10 is rain. I did that. Oh geez, long time ago. It barely got any views, guys. I love you too. But no, seriously, it, it's a. Uh, it was really good. I shortly went insane, all based off the fact that um. I don't know if he was at a farm or if he was just in a town, but the place wasn't getting rain, and he starts resorting to different things, and I'm not going to stop there, but it, it was one that I just, I think I found it randomly, and it was just sublime. It's great. Number nine is an apple day. I, friggin I think MCP did it a while ago. It, you know, the apple day keeps the doctor away. It's, it explains the supposed origin of how that even came to be, which... I call bullshit, but the story's good, so. Number eight is Mothman. Mothman, uh, okay. To all you hipster old yellers, whatever the fuck you guys are. J even though Mothman is a, uh, urban legend or whatever the fuck you guys want to label it as. It's like metal music sub every shit. But the bottom line is, is, I'm ranting about my previous top ten list too. Okay. Uh, Jack the Ripper. Mothman. Uh, are, they're creepypastas. Do you want to know why? Because it, the definition of a creepypasta is a scary story that is tossed around the web. And it doesn't just have to be through chain mail, guys. It, it just needs to be tossed around the web. So, there is a famous story on the Creepypasta Wiki about Mothman. They're the same thing with creepypastas about Jack the Ripper. So, technically, they are both an urban legend and a creepypasta. Okay, got that clear? Good. But yeah, Mothman's good. Predicts shit. Uh, like, Golden Gate Bridge. Was it a It was a bridge. It was some sort of bridge. I know the Golden Gate Bridge is still up. But some bridge just got destroyed the next day and we're sighting. So he's supposed to be a bad omen. That's the Mothman. Coming in at number seven. Yeah, seven is Barbie.avi. The weird thing is, is, this has a video to back it up, so that's not fucking creepy or anything. But, I don't know, it was weird because... I think it just had to do something with me because, you know, the, the place leading up to it, because I'm serious, I live in a place where there's train, tra train tracks, like a place leading up to a house, and I'm just like, whoa. Because it described it to a T, a place that I actually know, and yeah, that was pretty messed up. Coming in at number six is the club. Why'd you do it? I never thought tearjerkers would enter a creepypasta realm. Hence, is it even really a creepypasta? Well, because, yeah. Though it is a story passed around the web on the Creepypasta Wiki, it's not scary, it's just fucking tear-jerking. But I love it for that, and I guess I'll call it a Creepypasta, because it's there. I don't know what you want from me. Coming in at number f five? Okay, five. I'm losing track. Is Lavender Town Guild. I did a video on it recently. You know, typically, Pokemon stories, they, they have it like... So you picture it still in the game format, if you know what I mean. Like, when you're going through a Pokepasta, typically you picture it in that old bit form or whatever game it is. So it's not really that weird, but this one, it describes the Ghost Tower, or the Pokemon Tower, I think it's called Pokemon Tower, as it would look in real life. You, you don't picture it as this 8-bit building. You picture it as an actual thing, and there's actual people in it, an actual dead Pokemon. It's, it's beautiful. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Coming in after that at number four is Disney's Catacombs. Now, Disney's Catacombs, you, you think Abandoned by Disney is good? Hold on to your hats, because this is just as good. I don't know if it's, like, better, but it's holding its own against it, because, uh, one, it's Disney, and it's, it's freaking, ugh, just gotta love it. Gotta listen to it yourself. You can totally listen to my version if you want to. Coming in at number three is... Here we fucking go. All right. Marina Mortegard Glesgorv. Did I do that right? All right. I'm going to assume I did it right. I'm not going to say that again. This story is just like, yes, for multiple reasons. I've heard that it's been disproven. I don't know if it is or not. It most likely is. I know it's fiction. But the story, it, it relates directly to YouTube, which is what you're on right now, unless somebody took my video and posted it somewhere else. But... It, it directly involves YouTube, and it's just like, yes, man, it, it has that, it's one of those stories, that the classic what ifs, you know, what if, you know, this, this is, you know, your, your, your left side of your brain is like, this isn't true, but then your other side's like, but what if, 
would someone really make a claim like this if it you know was just for nothing and your left side's like yeah but then your right side's like man i don't know about this and hence you know you're freaked out because you can never really know for sure whether this is true or not and plus it's even got like a teaser video going on that like it's, it's great coming in at number two is happy puppet syndrome okay listening to this one for the first time i shit myself just because i think creepy children are a low blow as far as creep like being scared as it is but for the fact that it you know it brings up a good point that us as humans try to play god all the time and it just doesn't work and apparently what happens is when we try to play god we get demon babies swag coming in at number one. Oh boy this this one's this is a goodie this is a goodie uh is barney the dinosaur it was written by creeps like pasta himself you're a genius dude yes i mean it, it had everything to it there was nothing grammatically incorrect it was narrated beautifully um it led you on to think it was a paranormal theme but then in the end it's just like fuck nope real life and it's like what? it slaps you in the face with realism and how maniacal just human beings can really be. And for that, it is taking number one on my part two list. 